Hey guys, and welcome to today's video. Today, we're going to go through how to calculate the actual amount of calories that you are burning during your cardio sessions and explain why the little number of calories burnt on your cardio machines, yeah, they're lying to you. But first, take two seconds to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Ashmay PT, and also give the video a thumbs up whilst you're at it. So today we are talking about calories. So basically, bring on the keyboard warriors telling me that calories don't matter. Just shut up. Anyway, we know that regardless of what your body composition goal is, calories in versus calories out is important. If you're taking in more calories than you're burning, then you're going to gain weight. And if you're taking in less calories than you're burning, then you're going to lose weight. And as we all know, cardio is a very commonly used tool of increasing that second half of the equation, calories out. If you add cardio to your week, then you're doing more activity, which means you're spending more calories. So you end up adding weight to that side of the equation, the calories outside, which is going to help balance things in favour of which, what your goal is. And to do this, what people primarily go for is cardio machines. But why? Well, it's most likely for two reasons. The first being that they're convenient. They're right there, you hop on, you do it, you get off, you're done. And the other one is that they give you immediate feedback. When you go outside for a walk, unless you've got a fancy watch, you can't just look down and see how many calories you've burned or see what you've done. Whereas on these cardio machines, they give you that instant feedback, that instant gratification that yeah, I've just put in 10 minutes work and I've just burnt this amount of calories. Too bad those numbers don't mean shit. Okay, hear me out before you're triggered. Think about this. Loads of different companies all make the same cardio machines. And those different companies, all of them want you to think that their machines are the best. So that way you use their ones or you buy their ones for your gym rather than the competition. So how do they make you think that theirs is better when in reality they're all the same? Well, they literally just tell you that it burns more calories. Think about this, okay? If your gym has two different steppers made by two different companies and you do 10 minutes on level whatever on that one and then the exact same thing on the other one but one of them says that in those 10 minutes you burn 200 calories and the other one says that you burn 350 calories which one are you going to go to we're all using the one that says 250 calories aren't we let's be honest even though we know in our heads that we're doing the same thing, we're not really burning more calories, because that one says that it burns more calories, it feels better. It's that instant gratification, it's that instant feedback. And that's why we can't trust cardio machines for the calorie numbers. Companies make the count way higher than it realistically would be so that you think that their equipment is better. So now that I've just shattered all of your beliefs, it's okay, because luckily we do have a way to accurately figure out the amount of calories that you're expending. And we can figure this out using most cardio machines. When you hop on a static bike, a spin bike, or a stepper, or whatever it may be, Typically, they will tell you your power output or the watts that you're producing during your cardio. If it doesn't tell you it during the exercise, then when you press finish, a lot of the times across the screen, you'll see average power or average wattage output. And this is what we can use to calculate your calorie burn. See, calories are a unit of energy. Watts are also a unit of energy. If we know watts, we know calories. We just need to do some things to it first. The way that we calculate power is energy in joules times by time in seconds. So we can rearrange this equation, bringing back year nine maths, yeah, to get energy from the power and time numbers. So this would be energy in joules equals power in watts 
times by time in seconds. So now we've got that, now we need to change joules into calories. And this is pretty simple, because when you take into account all the inefficiencies and losses and all that kind of stuff that takes place in the body when expending energy, one joule pretty much equals one calorie. Nice and easy. So this gives us calories burnt in kcal equals average power output in watts times by time in hours times by 3.6. It sounds really complicated. It isn't. You literally just need to plug in the amount of watts that you did and the machine gives you that. And you need to plug in the amount of time that you did the machine for. The machine also gives you that. Easy. Just remember that because it's in hours, let's say you did it for 45 minutes, you would put into the equation 0 0.75 because that's three quarters of an hour. And then we times all of that by 3.6 to account for the seconds and minutes within an hour. And there we go. So an example of this would be you could ride a spin bike for 30 minutes with an average power output of 200 watts. So to get the accurate calories burnt, we would just do the equation, which would be 200 times 0 0.5, half of an hour, times 3.6. And that's going to equal 360 calories burn in that half an hour. So considering the amount of complicated rubbish we just went through, the actual process of doing it is quite simple. Bigger, heavier bodies are going to produce more power, which is why bigger and heavier bodies, bigger and heavier people, needs to eat more because every time they do something they're expending more power to propel themselves forward or to push the pedals down on a bike and that's going to burn more calories when you compare these people to somebody that's smaller and lighter they could appear to be doing the exact same thing but the amount of power they're outputting is completely different which is why these people need a completely different calorie intake to maintain their weight However, you could also get somebody that's smaller and lighter and somebody that's heavier and larger. If that smaller person is much more physically fit and active than that person, then they're going to be better and be able to put out more power in the same amount of time. So they will burn more calories in that activity, but they have to be better. Do you see, do you see what I'm getting at? So with all this being said, does it actually matter? Kinda? Well, calories definitely matter. There is no doubt at all, don't believe that anyone that tells you otherwise, that calories are the only dictator whether you're gaining or losing weight. There's other things that come into it, but they all go underneath the fact of calories out versus calories in. However, more on the topic that this video in particular is aiming at, does knowing an accurate amount of calories burned during cardio matter? It depends. If you are always consistent with the type of cardio that you're doing, then no, it doesn't matter. It just doesn't. Let's say that you always do your cardio walking on an incline treadmill. In this scenario, it doesn't matter how many calories that session is burning, because that session is consistent. And if you know that you need to increase the burn, regardless of what that number is, if you need to increase the amount of calories burned in that session, you can just increase the time, increase the speed, or increase the incline, and you know that number's gonna come up. But because you're consistent with the same form of cardio, the number's gonna be the same. So we don't need to worry about it. However, for those people that like to keep mixing up their cardio and do all different kind of things, these inconsistent people, then it starts to matter more. Let's say that on your weight loss plan, you have 300 calories of cardio per day that you need to do. If you're going by the screen that says how many calories you burn on the cardio machine, and one day you do 300 calories on the bike, one day you do 300 on the elliptical, one day you do 300 on the stair stepper, and one day you do 300 on the treadmill. Safe to say that every single day you burn a completely different amount of calories.
that 300 meant nothing because it's not accurate and they're inconsistent between machines. It's not going to be right. And because every single time your average calorie burn is going to be different, this could lead to inconsistent weight loss, potentially. So this is where being able to properly calculate the amount of calories that you burn comes into play. It makes inconsistency more consistent. That being said, it still is splitting hairs. It really is splitting hairs. Seriously, unless you're somebody that is going to compete on stage, you're getting shredded and coach boss man has given you 384.5 calories of cardio for this week, then I wouldn't worry about it too much. It's splitting hairs and it isn't important for 99.99% of the population. But this video is for fun. And I find it interesting to know the calculation, understand the maths. Maths is cool. And that is all for today, guys. Thank you for watching this video. If you did enjoy it and if you did learn something, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Ashmay PT, and also give the video a thumbs up whilst you're at it. If you have any questions at all on any topic, leave them in the comment section below and I'll get right back to you. Thanks again for watching and until the next one, see you later guys.